This is Black Mesa. Or should I say Half-Life 1 HD Remastered? And uh, look, it's, it sounds silly that I'm going to say, This is amazing. This is so awesome. It's Half-Life 1. Like, everyone should know that by now. But, like, I don't think I've ever really played Half-Life 1. <laughs> I mean, everyone knows... The beginning of, of this you game, nice you know, you're on the trolley and you put the thing in the thing and you blow some sort of hole open into another dimension. I've played the beginning of the game several times. Um, I never owned this game back in like uh, what, 1998, I think when Half-Life came out. Um, but there must have been a playable demo. I think there was a playable demo for the PC back in the late 90s, and uh, I, I played that, but that's about it. <laughs> I played the game on the Dreamcast, more out of curiosity um, to see how it looked and, and how it runs. So I've never really played Half-Life, and again, it sounds stupid to say because I've, because I want to say like, this game is so revolutionary and it's so great. And yet I never played it. I don't know why. And I feel silly now saying, like, the gameplay holds up um, really well. Obviously this is tweaked. So, I mean, Half-Life came out in the late 90s, in 1998. The first game that Valve ever made. <laughs> um, and I think it was running on a modified Quake engine. And, um, like, Half-Life was obviously very revolutionary for the time i don't know if like when, when that came out was that the first game i ever played where like wasd was your controls <laughs> you know with a mouse um because i i'm still playing doom 2 and like duke nukem 3d um even in the late 90s so maybe i thought it was weird i don't know <laughs> but never owned it back in the day Always wanted to go back and play Half-Life. I bought Half-Life on Steam probably five or six years ago. Always in my, you know, in the back of my head that eventually I've got to play Half-Life. Um, and then I heard about Black Mesa. So Black Mesa's been in development for like 15 years. Um, I, don't, I don't know the whole details, but I mean, basically it was a group of people that wanted to update Half-Life and bring it into the Source engine, you know, after Half-Life 2 came out. Um, so, I mean, originally this was a mod. This was going to be something that if you had Half-Life 2, uh, this would be a mod that you would download and run in Half-Life 2. Uh, you know, unofficial, not supported by Valve, and these guys were just working away at it, and I guess Valve, you know, saw it, and uh, thought it was good enough to be official and they officially endorsed it and you know this is supported by Valve now uh, this is not a mod this is a self-contained game you can go on Steam you buy Black Mesa you play Black Mesa you don't have to own Half-Life 2 uh, to play this and I think the graphics are actually quite a bit better than Half-Life 2 <laughs> Um, you know, there was a couple times I was playing this, and I forgot that I was playing Half-Life 1, as if I was playing, like, Half-Life 3 or something. I actually forgot I was playing Half-Life, um, because the graphics are great. Um, you know, they're not modern AAA title, but I think they're better than Half-Life 2, while still looking like Half-Life, if that makes sense. It still looks like a Valve game, it still looks like a Source Engine game. Um, you know, it's like Portal 2 kind of graphics. So yeah, these these guys did a great job. Crowbar Collective, I should say. It was <laughs> developers called Crowbar Collective that made this. Again, this wasn't developed by Valve. And originally it was going to be a mod, and then that kind of transi transitioned into it becoming its own game. And again, despite starting in 2005, this didn't officially become a game you can buy until this year, 2020. 
<laughs> so it's crazy. And yeah, it's amazing. This is you know, the game's the game as a concept obviously holds up really well. It was for the time a first person shooter with some puzzle elements and you know a sci-fi uh, story a lot of story integrated into the into the game engine which was probably again pretty revolutionary for its time um, but the way the game's paced I mean it's, it's slow um, and it's, that's part of the atmosphere I suppose but you start with no weapons <laughs> for the first like 10 minutes of the game until you get the crowbar and then you only have the crowbar for a little while until you get a pistol. And that I kind of knew about. What I didn't really know about is when you get to the um, like the human AI. Because um, even the enemies, it starts off as just little face huggers. And then eventually you get these like bigger aliens that are firing like plasma energy things back at you. So you're getting enemies that are shooting back at you. Um, but it's not until like a third of the way in the game where now you're fighting humans. And it really ramps the action up. Like, you know, this game is so fast-paced. The shooting uh, holds up so well. And again, duh. I mean, <laughs> this is the game that, you know, created uh, Counter-Strike. You know, obviously the shooting is good. And the action is fast-paced. But it still is surprising to me looking back and realizing how well this holds up. Again, obviously, it's improved. It's the source engine. But it's not like you just, you know, press a button to port Half-Life into the source engine and, and that magically fixes everything. This plays a lot better. Obviously, the again, the physics are a lot better. And, um, you know, I think the, the controls have been tweaked a, a little bit. Um... It still has the load times in between sections. I was kind of hoping they fixed that, uh, and they didn't. But really, I think the big issues uh, sometimes getting uh, like stuck on things, getting stuck on edges, um, and and the platforming. I think the platforming is what has improved a lot. And again, as someone who barely played Half Life, and even then, that was back in the late '90s. I can't say for sure, but I think the platforming's a lot better in this. I think the way you can control when you run and jump, it just makes the platforming sections a lot easier. And it becomes a really good mix of the, the again, what made Half-Life great was mixing the storyline, the storyline in the, being told to you, the story being told to you in the 3D engine not necessarily in separate cutscenes, uh, and mixing uh, mi mixing the puzzles and the platforming uh, into like this sci-fi story uh, into a fast-paced, well-playing first-person shooter, <laughs> um, and it just gets better and better. Like I said, the way it progresses, um, you know, you start off with no weapons. And it's a slow progression to get better and better weapons. And it's a slow progression with enemies. Uh, like I said, it's about a third of the way in the game. And you start fighting humans. And then, like, good God, man. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> like, this is so fun and frantic. And the controls are amazing. The shooting is amazing. And is that all the original Half-Life doing that? Like, is that all the original Half-Life that's holding up? Um, or, you know, how much of that is the Source engine and how much of that is whatever tweaking that these these crowbar guys did? <laughs> it's like, I just can't believe how awesome it is. And again, it's like, yeah, of course it's awesome, it's Half-Life. <laughs> again, I just feel silly every time I say this is awesome because it's Half-Life, and yet I've never really played Half-Life. Um, I've never played Half-Life to the point where you get to human AI shooting back at you, and it's, it's so good. 
so yeah, this game is on sale on Steam right now. I think I paid like $15 Canadian for it. Um, and it's, it's a no-brainer. Again, I feel stupid sitting here telling you how awesome Half-Life is <laughs> in, in the year 2020. Blown away by how well it's held up and how much fun the action is. This is an awesome game. If you've played the original Half-Life and you've been thinking about replaying it, get Black Mesa. And if you've never played Half-Life, <laughs> get Black Mesa. This, this is an awesome game for $15 Canadian. Again, it's... Go get it now.